Oh my goodness, the Chicago Marathon 2023 was epic. Now, I'm gonna give you a recap here, but I gotta say that going into the marathon, we had some high expectations, and this was in every field. This was in the men's elite field, the women's elite field, and both wheelchair divisions, and I'll tell you right now that all four did not fail to impress at all, probably beyond our wildest dreams, really. So let's go through a little recap of this, and I'm not going to spoil exactly what happened. We'll just kind of let it unfold. But let's take a look at the men's elite field. Now, we have Kip Ruto coming back, who's a Chicago uh, champion, Boston Mar did really well at Boston Marathon. He's just ex running exceptionally well. We've got Kelvin Kiptum, the man that everybody is looking towards here because of what he's done. Now, this is only his I believe his third marathon, but his his debut marathon was the was under 202, right? There's only three men to ever run under 202, and this is his debut marathon. <laughs> then he ran the London Marathon, and he ran the second fastest time ever, beating Kenanisa Bekele as the second fastest time, and second only to the great Elliot Kipchoge. Now, this is Kiptum's third marathon, and he called out that he's going for the course record. He didn't say he was going for the world record, but he started to like hint at it a little bit, but he knew that it was going to be a fast day. We have Seifu Tora, and we have Galen Rupp. Now, actually, I can tell you that early on in the race, there was such a breakaway that we didn't really get to see much of the field running. We only got to see the lead pack and the lead pack, I won't tell you who was in there yet, was so far ahead from the gun basically that we didn't even really get to see most of these elite runners on camera. But we also had Connor Mance. Now, Connor Mance is a is an NCAA champion. This guy is really killing it. And at the Boston Marathon just this year, he, he did so much better than... Um, I think anybody could have even expected of this guy. This guy is a true competitor and he can grind really hard in the latter portions of a race. So the men's race was really stacked, but the women's race was equally as stacked. We have a newbie as well. So just as on the men's side, we have Kiptum as basically a newbie, his third marathon ever being run here in Chicago. We have Safan Hassan, who's only running her second marathon ever. And she's you know, broken the world record on the track in the 10,000 meters and the 5,000 meters. She's just crushing it. And she's racing here today too. But she's running up against some, you know, very talented women. She's running against uh, Desiree Linden, Boston Marathon winner, Olympian. She's running against uh, Emily Sisson and Emma Bates as well. And so this race would prove to be very competitive. So the, uh, the wheelchair divisions were quite impressive as well. We're gonna get into those in a second here, but let's go. So as the gun went off, just a few minutes really into the race, we already see the top Americans. We see Galen Rupp and Connor Mance, and they're, they're at about a 207 pace. They said that they were going to maybe go for 206.30 pace. That was the plan, but they said that uh, with the conditions, uh, the conditions were actually fast, but they said they were going to go for about 207 pace. We'll see how that unfolded for them, but that was the plan. Okay, Rupp and Mance going for 207. And at the start, there were uh, a number of pacers for the men and the women's field, but in the men's field, the pacers were set to go out at a 61.30 through the halfway, and that would put them at a, you know, a really fast, a course record time, but not a world record time. But they decided kind of last minute that they were going to actually go through in 60 and 40 seconds. It seems like the, the men were really going to be going for a world record here. Whether they could get it or not, we'll see. And it was only about 25, 26 minutes into the race where there was an early breakaway. And we can see a couple of pacers uh, sticking up there, but really just two of the men up there, cranking it out, really going for a top-notch pace. Now, at this time, they were not on the world record pace. In fact, they were falling just a little bit behind it. But it showed that they were really serious because although they had fallen behind world record pace by just a handful of seconds, they were picking up the pace even early on, half an hour into the race, to try to catch back up to that world record pace. And they started closing in on it, and closing in and getting closer. Now, the day before, at a press conference, Kelvin Kiptum said that he actually was officially going for the course record. But he also says that he's fitter than he was in London. And in London, remember, he ran the second fastest time of all time. And being that Chicago was going to be run in good weather, he said that, well, the world record is possible. 
So we know that Kiptum is going for something special here, at least a course record. And he's let the cat out of the bag that he's kind of going for the world record. And we see it with his pace. We see it with, uh, you know, him picking it up a half an hour in to go, going through the half. And then what unfolded in the last, you know, 10 miles or so was pretty incredible. At about the same point into the race, the women were going through at a spectacular pace. Now we had Safan Hassan going through at about 2.11 pace early on, about a quarter of the way into the race. She's on pace to run a course record and maybe be going for a world record, pretty close to it. Okay, back to the men. Now, at the 10K, the men are back on world record pace. So they've picked it up and they go through the 10K in 28 42, which is just shy of world record pace. Mile eight was run at a 440. Now they only need to keep a 436 in order to break the world record. And they picked it up running a little bit quick right here to get back at it. But it shows that there's an intention here. It shows that they're not messing around, that they're really getting back at that world record pace, even if it means running faster than they need to average right now, which is a little bit risky to be thrown in a surge, you know, eight miles into a marathon. But that's what they're doing. And at this point in the race, the cameras are just on the lead pack and we really don't get to see much of the runners <laughs> that aren't in the top two. You know, we don't see Galen Rupp, we don't see Connor Mance, we don't see Desiree Linden, we don't see anybody, men's side and women's side. It's just a breakaway and we have some of the greatest of all time. So where the heck is everyone else? We see Daniel Mateko and Kelvin Kiptum alone up there. And honestly, I'm wanting to see more of these elite runners, but they're just not there. And you know, what are we gonna do? They're not gonna put another pace car in the middle of the pack and run people over. So um, we'll just see how it unfolds. As they go through 15K, they're right on world record pace. So they've brought it back to world record pace and they're keeping it there, just ticking it off and ticking it off. They're actually just a few seconds off of world record pace, but the commentators keep saying, and if you've followed Kiptum's uh, last couple marathons, he closes really fast. And in fact, he has the fastest half marathon split ever run in a marathon, breaking an hour in the half marathon for his last half of his fastest marathon. So we know that he can close really, really fast. So being just a couple seconds off at 15K in is really no big deal at all. Now, the Americans at this point coming up on 15K, they're on pace for about a 2.08.10. And this would be Rupp and Mance predominantly. Now back to the women's race, Safan Hassan, she takes the lead. She's been running just tucked away nice in second place drafting and she passes Ruth and she takes the lead and she's gonna try to hold this probably through the end. She's a very fierce runner. And Safan Hassan, she said, she's very humble. Coming into this race, she didn't say that she's going for any records at all. She's long-term focused. And what she is doing is she said, direct quotes, running isn't life or death. I'm just here to learn, I'm curious. So she understands that this is her second marathon only and she really wants to get experience. Experience for what? Well, we can presume that the Olympics coming up next year, but I really think that Safan Hassan is a future world record holder. I really do. I think that her humbleness in this race is really gonna serve her really well. We see a lot of the greatest runners of all time being very humble, especially in distance running and, uh, and performing really well. And sometimes when we see um, you know, sh more showboatiness in distance running. Oftentimes it's entertaining, it's fun, and they get overtaken eventually by these these great runners who run almost stoically. Eliud Kipchoge, um, and in this case, Safan Hassan. And I would say that the two of them are some of the best in their fields respectively. So just over an hour into the race, we're closing in on halfway. And with Mateko and Kiptum, they've dropped one of the pacers even. Pacers can't even keep up. These guys are going so fast that they had two pacers. One of them is just gone and moving along here. It's about at this point that the wheelchair divisions start to come across the line. And we see some amazing times. We see, we see Marcel Hugh break his own record here by three minutes. Now, three minutes is exceptional. Three minutes in a marathon running would be exceptional. And in the wheelchair division where they're going even faster and it's a shorter period of time, this is like really on another level, right? So he actually broke the course record, which gives him a nice, I think a $50,000 bonus. And um, they say the Chicago Marathon is the first marathon to give equal course record bonuses to the men and the women runners and the men and the women wheelchair, no difference. So it's a $50,000 bonus. And Marcel Hugh snatches that up with a record time and he just keeps on getting better. And in his interview at the finish line, he also seemed pretty humble, 
um, pretty grateful and just looking into the future. So I think we'll see a lot more good coming from him. And we're coming up to now the women's wheelchair finish and the men's running in the 30K mark. So let's go in order that, the, that it's happening. Um, in the men's race, they're coming up on 30K. And Kiptum said in the past that he likes to break away at about 30K. He likes to kind of just like hold on and be a little bit more conservative and run a negative split. And 30K is where he's gonna go. So we know that him leading at this point is a really good sign considering that he has the ability to negative split really well, it's like, what is he gonna do? And the fire was just alive. The commentators are going nuts. The crowd is going nuts. What is he gonna do? Is this gonna be history? Is Iliad Kipchoge watching? You bet. I mean, I don't know, but I'll bet Kipchoge is watching this. How could he not? And, uh, and so now the women come across the line with their wheelchair division. And once again, it's a sprint finish. I mean, seriously, they come around the last turn and it's like a hundred meters to go in a wheelchair. They're flying towards the finish line and it is truly a sprint finish. And Catherine de Brunnen, and Catherine de Brunner, she sets yet again a course record. So we now have a course record in the men's wheelchair and the women's wheelchair division, 50K bonus, 50K bonus. It's quite spectacular. Now the men and the women runners focus returns to them. Ooh, I got some goosebumps. So here's how it unfolded. Now, during a commercial break, Kelvin Kiptum actually breaks away and you can see him just pick up the pace, pick up the pace, pick up the pace. He's grinding. He looks like he's in a track race and I'm wanting the commentators to say something, but you know, it's just this commercial break and we can just see him flying and it's like, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on here? And when we come back, he goes through the 30K at a pace of a 201.41 finish time, but he's picking it up. So even though he's on pace for about the world record, he's accelerating. So as long as he doesn't blow up, it's starting to seem like he's gonna get the world record. He's just off of it a little bit, right where he wants to be. And it's like clockwork at the same time, even though they're at different miles, at the same time, Safan Hassan, she also breaks away from the women's field and she drops about a 10 second gap on second place and she just grinding it out. So at this point in the race, we've got Safan Hassan grinding away, accelerating, and we've got Kelvin Kiptum grinding away, accelerating, and they're both on pace for a course record, maybe a world record. It is on. From 30K on, and this, this race was just on fire. And it's this point that Kelvin Kiptum did something that is truly, truly insane. He dropped a 421 mile at mile 20. Now, he only needs to keep 436. 421 is smoking. And that's when we see him just kind of like grinding it out. And he's really going for that record. And then at mile 21, he's still going at 424. So he drops a 421, boom, 424, boom. And now, ladies and gentlemen, he is ahead of world record pace and he's past the mile 21 mark. Is he gonna hold on? Looking back in the pack, Connor Mance is still number one for the USA, and it seems like he's probably gonna hold it. And as we come closer to the finish line, all eyes are on Kiptum. He's got two miles to go, and he's on sub 201 pace, and he's only got two miles to go. And he closes really fast. He's on pace at this point for a two hour flat, 56 second. So let's just not blow up here, Kiptum, and let's just keep going. And he's looking good. He's grinding it out. And you can see on his face, he's really starting to struggle here. And he's starting to go to the arms and he's swaying back and forth. And his, uh, his demeanor looks like he's, you know, pushing as hard as hard can be. And his legs, even the commentators say, they could see his knees were kind of low and he had that marathon gait and he picked him up and he looks like a track runner now. So everything is looking really good, like he's gonna smoke this and the tension is there because as he comes down with just half a mile to go, he's ahead of world record pace, but just barely. And if he blows up and he looks like he's gonna blow up, he looks like he might actually blow up. Maybe not, who knows, but he's really struggling. He's not there yet. And he's within seconds of that world record, but he picks it up and he picks it up and he picks it up more and more and more and he smashes the world record. He's the first human to ever run under 201 and Kelvin Kiptum breaks the world record with two hours, 35 seconds. Now, what could he have done had he had pacers? His pacers started dropping off pretty early and his second pacer dropped off relatively early. If he had control conditions, if he had pacers th that could stick around until, you know, 35, 30, 35 K or so, what could he do? I mean, could he go even faster? The man is only 23 years old. 
So I believe we'll be seeing him at the Olympics. And as it stands right now, we're maybe going to see Kiptum versus Kipchoge at the Olympics. And um, Kiptum is quite a bit younger. So I actually believe that as time goes on, Kiptum is going to be the new king. He's the new king with the world record now, but can he win at the Olympics? Can he win the world championships? Can he stay at the top and win these big marathons and continue to get better? I think that he probably can. Kipchoge is, you know, I think the greatest marathoner of all time. And he's not at the end of his career. I don't think so at all. He just ran a fantastic time just shy of the world record. I think he can get even better. And I think that right now, if had the two of them raced each other, had Kipchoge run here instead of Berlin with these conditions, I think that they would have been just about equal. Who would have won? I really don't know. I really don't. I don't think anybody could. And that's what makes this so exciting. But there's nobody even close to the two of them. And if we can see a showdown between them two next year at the Olympics, I think it's going to be the most outstanding marathon that we've possibly ever even seen. So rounding it off here, we've got second place with Benson Kiprudo coming in at just over 204. And, you know, it's pretty insane that Kiptum had finished and then it jogged around and jogged back out onto the course and started to run in with Kiptum, uh, sorry, with uh, Kip Rudo even just a little bit. He had so much time. He had almost four minutes to kill before second place came in. And we don't see this. This is complete dominance. Um, but Kip Rudo still took, I think it was a minute and a half off of his own PR. So coming across the finish line first, of course, we had Safan Hassan, and it's the second fastest marathon time ever. And it's her second marathon only. She got the course record, a 2.13.38. Can you believe it? So we've got a course record for the wheelchair men, course record wheelchair women, and then course record world record men, and then a course record for the women as well. Each getting paid out on a, a nice $50,000 bonus just for setting the record. And then on top of that, there's going to be a world record bonus. There's going to be um, a prize for a purse, cash prize for winning as well. These are some big paydays for these runners here at Chicago. Uh, and I really am impressed here. Coming across in second place, we had Emily Sisson, who ran such a fantastic race. Molly Seidel was started to close in on her towards the end of the race. We didn't really even get footage of that because Hassan and Sisson were like so far ahead. The cameras really weren't on uh, Molly, but so the commentators say that she was closing in. Still, Emily Sisson held on, and we have today four course records, one world record. I hope that you really found something uh, fun in this recap here. What I want to say to you is that we are in a new era of marathon running here. Um, if you look at the top 10 fastest times, now I remember saying this about three years ago, that the top 10 fastest times, nine of them were run in just the last couple years, and now it's like those times are blown out of the water. We've had Kipchoge run a world record, break his own world record. We had Bekele come on and get the second fastest time ever. We have Kiptum now running the first, the third, and I believe the sixth fastest times of all time. So these top 10 times, they've all been run in like the last three years, or most of them at least, right? And we're just in a new era. The world record for women, you know, Paula Radcliffe held the world record for women for so long and it seemed untouchable. She was the greatest of all time and it's just been smashed by so much right now. And we've got multiple women that are just on an, like a completely new level. And it's hard to even imagine like how this is happening. There's improvements in technology. We've had some really good course conditions. The course conditions in Chicago here were just fantastic. I have two of my runners running it right now. I can't wait to see how they did. Good luck to you guys. I do think that we're going to see a sub two hour marathon in an open race happen. I do think it's going to happen from Kelvin Kiptum. Um, and I think that Kipchoge is not done yet. I think next year might be the year for the two of them to show down. And I really am looking forward to that. So take care. If you got something from this, go ahead and like the channel, subscribe. I hope to see you on one of those next videos. This has been Andrew Snow with Run Elite. Take care, happy Sunday, and goodbye.